Hey, it's Jill, your personal strategist and energetic ninja. I just got asked one of the best questions from a very dear friend of mine about, um, of all things, her son's bedroom. And of course, I am all about feng shui. I am all about creating a space that nourishes and supports you. I believe that energetically when your home is flowing and nourishes and supports you and it's chaos and clutter free, that impacts how you can live your life, right? So if we energetically and strategically align what it is we truly want, in the space in which we live, then we are able to have more energy to go after the things we truly want. So what happens when it comes to kids? Well, first off, you are the leader. So as the leader, it's important that, um, that your space and your room is clean and clutter free because you are the leader. They are following you. They are watching you. They are emulating you. So you have to make sure that your bedroom reflects what it is you are wanting them to do. But here's the deal. Everything is energy. So everything that is in a bedroom, in your space, vibrates with a certain level of energy. So we have yin energy and we have yang energy. Yin energy is the, the slower, calm energy. Yang energy is very vibrant and bright and fiery. So if we think about certain colors, certain colors are very yin, certain colors are very yang. So the reds and the oranges are very yang, busy energy. You know, the soft blues and the soft greens are more yin energy, okay? so. The color in a space definitely impacts the room and the sort of feel that's gonna happen, but let's think about the things in the space. So what happens in a lot of kids' rooms, and I see this all the time with clients, is the fact that it's like, oh, well, I tell them to clean it up and they don't do it. Well, have you shown them how to clean it up? Does everything have a place? Have you shown them what it means to have a clean space at the end of the day? Have you made that important? Have you gone in there and helped them in order to show them? Because honestly, my kids are 8, 10, and 18. The 18-year-old obviously takes care of her room, but the 8-year-old and the 10-year-old, I still go in there and assist them and show them what the expectation is. Because I'm creating the expectation of what I want it to be so that the energy aligns with what they need. Because a bedroom is all about rest and relaxation, about nurture nourishment, about, you know, having that good sleep so that you can have as much energy as you want the very next day. And so when we do that, we have to take a look at the things in the room. So if we have an overabundance of toys in the room, they're very yang busy energy. And so that isn't the energy of rest and relaxation, right? And so some of you will say, well, I don't have any other place in the house to put all the toys. Well, fine. Let's find a way to organize the toys and put them away at night into baskets, into containers, into the closet, okay? If you have no other room in the house to do them. Let's first declutter the toys. Do they love it? Do they use it? Kids are amazing at doing decluttering. If you just say to them, you know, what, what are the toys you really love, love playing with? And what are the toys that you could let go of and I will tell you time after time a parent will tell me their kid will never do it and I will set them up and have them do it and I used to go do in-home feng shui consultations and I would come back and the kid would have sorted through all the toys very quickly because they know what it feels like to really love something okay so think about how many toys are in the room that's a big deal the bed should always be made right there's nothing better than getting into a fresh bed every single day so my 10 year old makes her own bed my 8 year old still believes that she can't so she has to do a portion of it and then I do the rest of it and you know we will get to her doing the whole thing the teenager's bedroom which I'm actually going to show you looks like this every morning when she leaves okay because this is what I have set as the agreement that we've made in our house as to how the rooms are supposed to look when they leave in the morning. Are the kids allowed to play in the rooms? For sure they are. But then at the end of the day, we clean it all up and put it all back the way it's supposed to be. The 10 year old does it herself now. And I just have to go in and make sure that she is, you know, ensuring that things aren't getting hidden in the desk because she's 10 and she likes to do that. Sometimes the teenager, her walk-in closet starts to implode a little bit. So I will double check that, right? Because this is my space I am the keeper of the energy right and they are kids and so I'm gonna make sure that I'm there to help and support them so what do you do in a child's space we want to make sure that the space is clean at the end of the day so everything is put back into certain containers certain areas we want to ensure that there aren't too many toys in the room so I like to keep books in the room and then I keep their favorite toys in the room so I'm going to show what that looks like in my two daughters bedrooms Okay, we wanna make sure that the bed is always made, that the room looks beautiful, that it feels nourishing and supporting. I like to add a salt crystal lamp to this space because it clears the energy as well.
well. It also promotes healthy sleeping. And I will tell you that with clients, as we clean and declutter their kids' rooms, their kids sleep better, they're in a better mood, they communicate better, they have more fun. Why? Because the energy is cleaned up, right? Clutter creates sticky energy. Clutter creates tension. And that's not what you want, right? And that's most certainly not what you want for one of your kids. Okay, so in their space, you are going to take a look at the colors to so go for more of the yin colors. Ask me any questions you want on this. You know, you want to ensure that you don't have too many toys in the space. You want to add a salt crystal lamp. You want to think about creating a space that you would want to lay down and go to sleep in. If you hate going into your kid's room, like there's a problem. And if you have to close the door when company comes, there's a problem. And yes, I've got three kids. They're allowed to play in their room. They're allowed to pull everything out. It's not a big deal. But at the end of the day, we put everything back. Because the problem is clutter attracts clutter. So the more stuff there is, the more stuff that continues to pile up. It's like all of a sudden, like rabbits with bunnies. Like it's just overwhelming, the stuff that happens. And yes, my kids say, no, it needs to be out because it's so important to me. And so we will leave something out that they have made as a creation for a few days and then it's time to put it away. But you are teaching them, you are training them, you have to be involved in the process. They will model you and they will assist you if you help them, if you get them, if you teach them. Because now my, my kids know what it means for their room to be clean, right? They know what the level of cleanliness that is required and they also know that when I say I'm going to come check their desk <laughs> that they better get in there and the stuff they were too lazy to take to the recycling they will do okay but I know that the energy in a kids room is key for their personal energy because everything impacts it so if you have kids that are very busy um, very action oriented very emotional you want to make sure that their room is a space that is nourishing and calm you want earth energy elements which are more grounding right you want to take the metal out of the room you want to have a solid wood headboard in there and you want to place their bed on the strongest wall these are all things that shift the energy in the space which means that you're shifting their personal energy you are uplifting them. It's like taking parenting to the next level, which is why I love it so much, because now we're energetically supporting your child, okay? So I want you to think about what's in your kid's room, what could be removed out of there. If it's overly cluttered, if you can't close the closet doors, you need to work on that. If you can't see the floor, that's a problem. You don't want to store stuff under the bed. The only thing you would store is maybe an additional mattress or some um, additional blankets, but think about what toy storage under a bed is. Well, that's very yang energy, very busy energy. So how do you sleep soundly when there's busy energy, right? If one of my kids is sick, and this is when the kids were older, I put a bowl of Epsom salts under the bed to clear out the negative energy. I add essential oils of lavender and chamomile to shift the energy in the room, or if they've been sick, or if they've had a hard experience, right? These are all things energetically we can do to support our child. So go into your kid's room, no matter what their age, and assess how it feels. Are you comfortable in there? Does it feel nourishing and supportive? When you look around, is it visually appealing? And if it's not, you have some work to do. So get on it. And I'd love to see your before and after pictures. If you enjoy and want to learn more about Feng Shui, I have a online program called Foundational Feng Shui. And I would invite you to check out the link. I will post it below. It is an easy online learning system for Feng Shui for your space. You know, when you energetically align your space, you improve your personal energy, you nourish and support your family, you increase your communication. And in the end, you can just get more stuff done because you feel better. So I love feng, feng Shui. It is a foundation for me. It is a foundation that I teach my clients and it is a really fun program to do. We have a private Facebook group that we interact in all week long and it's a good time. So I want to show you my, um, this is my eight-year-old's room.